positive aspect of Brexit is that it provides a stonking shock both to Britain and to the Eurozone. For Britain, it makes it possible to sort out some of our long-term problems. For the Eurozone, it brings forward the moment where they have to decide whether they want to be a fully-fledged single country or a looser confederation of nation-states. The obvious negative of Brexit is that it's going to lead to slower growth in the UK next year. Businesses are going to put investment on hold, consumers are going to be affected by higher inflation and the economy is going to slow. It was going to slow anyway, but it's going to slow more because of Brexit. I think what's not getting much coverage as a result of Brexit is the almost inevitability of there being a grand bargain between Britain and the EU at some point. For example, Britain is the biggest export market for French wine and at the moment uh, there is a 30% tariff on all wine from outside the EU coming into Britain. Britain could quite easily say to the French, you know what, from now on there'll be a 30% tariff on French wine and a zero tariff on New Zealand and Chile and Sauvignon Blanc. How do you like that? The French probably wouldn't like it very much. A deal will be done. I think when it comes to saying which will be the next country after Britain to leave, it's a pretty open field. Um, and I think it will probably be one of the current big three. It could be Italy. They've got a strongly uh, anti-Euro party doing well in the polls. It could be France. Marine Le Pen uh, is doing well in the polls for the French presidency. But it could actually be Germany. That's a sort of dark horse. The Germans could decide, you know what, we've had enough of writing checks to the rest of Europe. We're going to go our own way and we're going to leave the rest of Europe behind.